The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow, and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Surely to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In this unique dispensation of the church age, termed out as Aleke Niketesu's new spiritual species unto Christ, we the church age believers, irrespective of our all time low cadres, having various racial discrimination and after believing in Christ entering into that great glory which could be called as the royal family of God. This royal family of God thumbed out as church, the universal church followed here over the earth assembly or gathering the right translation for that word could represent to take care for this church there should be one bona fide gifted pastor teacher but the problem in today's Christendom the believers are not able to discern who is the right pastor teacher who is having this bona fide gift given by the head of the church who is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and not the church committee wherewith you go with your qualified theological degrees from the seminary where you have learnt but rather the bona fide gift which could be recognized in you under the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit can cause you to realize the responsibility laid down upon your shoulders will take every day morning one hour and evening one hour to communicate the truth minimum 40 to 50 years continually. Not just weekly ones getting to the assembly not that you preach once a time in the YouTube, once a time in the telecasting of your TV, but the duty of a pastor teacher is to not even to diminish a single word, not even to diminish a single word, but rather telling like Apostle Paul, I have not shunned to declare the entire counsel of the Lord. Therefore I am pure from your blood. Neither have taken or kept myself the wisdom which the Lord has revealed to me. But rather I have given to you the entire counsel. And Benihin Ministries which says yesterday what I was watching in the TV. They have successfully entered 40 years. The 40 years of evangelical work, or he is a 40 years of pastor, Lord knows him very well. But when he was having a discourse telling Jesus in the tabernacle, this man, he tells the word propitiation. And the way this man wants to explain the glory which covered over the Ark of the Covenant on the mercy seat, which could be used in the Hebrew of Kapor, he tells propitiation is substitution. And the discourse, what he can have for two hours, and over 40 years of experience, that's what experience when they call, I would tell. 
it is a name given for their mistakes and alibis and excuses to rightly do the job which they have given but in the professional job they would call it as an experience but into the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit if it is really the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit into the realm of a pastor teacher or into the ministry of Lord 40 years of serving will or would have make or would have made Benny Hinn not to call propitiation as substitution but rather satisfaction in the Greek illustration the only reason why this man he thinks he can explain the topic known as Jesus in the tabernacle the conclusions that is going to get around the way he tells cherubs as cherubs and then he wants to explain what is the duty of these cherubs these cherubs are a defender of Lord's holiness in essence they are not guarding Lord's glory they are the defenders of Lord's holiness in God's absolute standards of essence and he wants to explain a blank of clutch who are being just sitting around round about his table and he wants to tell them have you got the point or not if you've got the point then why are you keeping quiet clap your hands and praise God the way he wants to charge for that two hours of discourse which is a moron minded message constantly looking into the books and trying to tell which transformation is not from inner experience or inner love towards Christ or inner desire for truth to his word but that way he wants to look upon the books and he wants to tell and he wants to quote the references and he wants to explain each and every word I don't deny notes are required your own notes is been required when you're thoroughly prepared when you're thoroughly indulged into that and he wants to come around and tell around that this two hours of discourse what I have thought if it is a sterling or pounds I don't know if it is a video format it will cost you 20 sterlings if it is audio format it will call cost you 15 pounds out of your 40 years of your service what you have done that's what you have put 40 years of Benny Hinn ministries out of your 40 years of service can't you give that freely to the people who really want that information if they think that information is right and not only this at the end of the sermon he wants to tell getting one more clock there when Job could give seven rams and seven he goats Lord said to Satan it seems Job has given seven now we are going to pay him back the double exactly today when you sow to that ministry seven dollars Lord will stand against you and he will tell to Satan it seems give back them their health their happiness the pleasure and 77 times you're going to get more this is his 40 years of ministry what he wants to communicate I would rather tell Mr. Benny Hinn directly on the face rather than keeping your name under such kind of a ministry go and beg money somewhere else so that you think blasphemy to my Lord is nothing Do you think your bribe your money is required for Lord when you can pay seven times Lord is going to pay you back 77 times what do you know about the word of the Lord and you are keeping a blank of a bunch of clucks around you those morons who do not even know what is the word of the Lord looking into the translation for your English and they're trying to think and you're making to help them to understand even if you could survive here for more than 4,000 years not 400 years 
You will never finish the entire Bible. Nor you will ever come to realize that propitiation is not substitution, but it is satisfaction. And wrongly interpreting the word of the Lord, wrongly giving wrong information, since you do not have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher best over for you. You do not value nor have honor for Lord's word, Mr. Benny Hinn. You are best suited to cheat the people, walking around where Jesus walked, jumping around where Jesus jumped. That's the best what you can do in Israel. What the people will follow you by following you, that walking where the people can walk, where Jesus walked, what value does it count for you? Are you not the sanctuary today, the church age? Every believer is it not Lord's glory today. The Shekinah, which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is, he doesn't indwell in you. Lord God the Holy Spirit does not indwell in you. Lord God the Father does not indwell in you. And what else you are looking for to answer? Without doctrine, even the place where Lord God Almighty resides in you, as Trinity is not valued, is not given that great honor and integrity. Or far less you go to Jerusalem and walk around the steps where Jesus walked, pray around the steps where Jesus prayed, and you think you have above sanctification and above salvation. I am challenging and telling you, Mr. Banahin. Correct the word for propitiation as satisfaction, not as substitution. And the language is that you think you can tell the word of the Lord with your wisdom. Even a moron scholars will laugh at you. And this man, they are following you. Maybe you have a tag 40 years. And that 40 years, you worked as an evangelist or you worked as a pastor. The Lord should know that and you should know that. The difference between an evangelist and a pastor. A pastor who is faithfully prepared will never speak like you if he is having a 40 years of experience. As you grow up, as you become old, a newborn baby will come to its strength and then go upon in the life. For example, if I could have a baby right now, right from this age till 40 years, can't you see the changes in his life? First he was crawling, and then he tries to stand on his own two feet, and then he tries to run on his two feet. And then gradually he grows up to stand upon his two feet. And then as sincerely the milk has been gone out, he takes upon strong word. And from then on he goes on to the meat. And then later on by the age of 25 to 30 or 35 he gets married. And he becomes an adult man. And if you could ask him, what were the childish things, will you follow those things now? He tells, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. But now I'm a mature man, I need to throw them out. I need to speak with responsibility upon Lord's word. And by the age of 40, as such, the many philosophers, they tell it is a spiritual maturity age. And right from the age of 40, they go on into the more perfection. That's what they tell. Every day could be moved for more perfection, not at the age of 40, which is not a landmark for you all to do that. They think we have this survey, we had that survey, so the people will reach to the age of 40. We have these things happening around till to the age of 40. Then by the age of 40, he starts like Abraham Lincoln and some other XYZ books, the way they have been writing and telling to them. By the age of 40 years, ultimately, what I want to tell to you all, he will be reaching to a state of physical maturity, perfect in nature. So when I could ask him, will you go back once again to your 
kiddish days and you go and play with those kiddish things like dolls or the instruments of these toys. He will laugh at me and he will tell, this is the age for my kids to play, not me. Exactly in the same manner, Mr. Benihin, after 40 years in his ministry, the way he is trying to preach the word, the way he is trying to explain the word, and the way he is still begging the money, not following the principle of grace, will really cause him ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ. That great ashamedness, what he can have. Maybe he will never come out with the fellow man ostracism, what he has. Because he has been habituated for begging money. Absolutely habituated. Not only begging money, even following into the miracles or healings crowd. And that was his ministry from the last 40 years. Now today, if you want to explain Jesus in the tabernacle, we may not tell propitiation as, satis as substitution rather than satisfaction. When you want to use those words which are theological, and which are rightly translated into our English. Better be careful when you're preaching those things which are belonging to the department of the glory of Lord God Almighty. That department of faithful pastor teacher who is thoroughly prepared, who is thoroughly trained under the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit can give to you a rebuke so that you can be reproved, corrected, and used once again to the training process of righteousness which Christ demands in you. When this is the fate for 40 years of a man who is into the ministry, having a renowned name over the entire world, and the way this man wants to teach the word and once again charge for them, the only humble thing which I want to request in my heart and the people who are listening to this tape is it justifiable that he can wait upon the money of those people rather than giving it freely his stupid discourse for two hours which doesn't count for anything I would rather suggest my human mentor, the late Robert Bunker Thieme Tapes, which has been given worldwide free of cost. How? By the voluntary donations of the people who really love Bible doctrine to be perpetuated. And I'm proud enough to say I'm one of the recipients of those tapes. And I'm much thankful to those people who made this program successful. Donate the tapes entirely the worldwide free of cost. Rather than keeping and buying sterlings of 20 or 20 pounds and 15 pounds for the audio version, not video, just the audio version. I would rather suggest for you all to send a letter to Robert Bunker Thime or go to the website and check www.rbthime.org and write a letter to them you desire the truth. They will definitely respond to you by giving you that truth. And that's the true ministry. They have come here to serve, not to be served. They have come, this Benihin ministries, they are coming for you to beg. And begging in such kind of a blasphemous manner that they think Lord is interested in their money. If you give $7 today, Lord is going to bless you back by $77 today because Lord will stand against Satan by taking a weapon and telling that, see, my servant has given to me faithfully $7. So you need to go and give and back him his peace, his family, his happiness. Don't you have shame to teach or to teach such kind of a stupid things 
rather than using the word of the Lord such blasphemously. The fellow man who was there at the end of the tape with Mr. Benny Hinn. Simply go and beg money on the streets. Don't and never use ministry for money. Don't and never you think Lord can be bribed with such kind of your inferior thoughts. For your lower substandardness of human viewpoint. Never you think Lord is going to look upon you like this. Lord is going to be waiting for you for your first seed investment of seven dollars. And he says very clearly, Lord is going to stand against the Satan as a weapon when you sow seven dollars. When Job sowed seven rams, seven he goes, do you know what does it mean to say? He was giving sacrifice for his sons because of the sin which was been kept arrogantly not to confess. And do you know what was the failure? Job's wife didn't teach them discipline or the fear of Jehovah. That's why Lord took them out, cleansed them out. But Job never wanted to look the wrath of the Lord upon their children. He went on confessing their sins by giving that sacrifices, not for the blessings. Never in the Bible it has been written that for the seven he goats and seven rams, for the children what he has given sacrifice, Lord made Satan to stand against and tell to Satan, you give double. Now, that is a wrong theology what you are teaching, a wrong interpretation what you are telling to the people. When you yourselves in the Christendom, being trichotomous in nature, calling to yourselves that 40 years of ministry was been made on behalf of us. You have not grown up to maturity. What do you think upon the fate of these unbelievers in my country like India who does not believe in Lord? And if at all they believe in my, country, in my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, do you not think we have a tough time to train them up? Even as such, it is a tough time to correct you as well. The mental blocks, you will never clear. The mental attitude, you will never come out. Your thinking, you will not live that. Your begging, you will not forsake it. Do you know why? Those die-harding habits will never die. Because once you have got accustomed to them, because for the name and the fame you will never correct the word of the Lord. Because for the name and the fame you will not stop healing ministry. Because for your lust patterns which you get through their money to be fulfilled. They will never stop making those people to jump around, walk around on the foot where Jesus walked, where Jesus ran. And when you are there with such kind of a lies in your mouth, blasphemy, lying to my Lord God, Holy Spirit. Telling to the point that Lord can do this, Lord can do that. He will stand against when you sow seven dollar seed. And seventy seven dollars, Lord will pay you back. You are using the name of the Lord blasphemously, dear brethren. Giving wrong information about my Christ that He waits for your money. And you think that the penance could be paid by tithes. Penance could be cleared by giving money unto the Lord. And you give an unbeliever a false assurance one step ahead that you are getting into salvation before Christ. Which is a wrong, blasphemous ministry, dear brethren. My Lord didn't charge for your salvation. Nor my Lord will wait upon your money when you sow seven dollars is going to pay you back seven seven dollars. Do you think it is a money scheme which will multiply? Never use the word of the Lord so blasphemously, dear brethren. 
my Lord has given graciously. And if ever he wants to bless you because of that imputed righteousness which has been credited to your account at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, because of that simple reason, Lord clearly bestows to you the blessings in time as well as in the purpose as you have been prospering materially. Because of that imputed righteousness, Lord will bless you. And the blessings would be more clear if you grow up in the word of the Lord. Blessings would be more accurate when you learn the word of the Lord more clearly. When you move on to the standards of maturity. Not when you sow your physical money as if Lord cannot get along without your money. It is not the Lord who cannot get along, but this Benihin ministries which cannot get along without your money. And never will they realize the teaching of Apostle Paul when he told, I work with my own hands to pay the rent of my home so that I can teach to these people doctrine three years and three and a half years regularly and continuously. And when this is the fate in Christendom, what about the unbelievers who are spiritually dead, who are dichotomous in nature? What can they know? Realize the glory of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They even have doubts, such kind of a doubts when we look at them. It really pities us to tell that they are having the zeal but not with knowledge. And Satan leads them to think the zeal what they're having is right, that is accurate, that is correct. Satan will never make them to think what exactly is the word of the Lord for them because they are spiritually dead. They cannot know what is the word of the Lord. And since the only word which could be useful for them is the gospel, the good news. The good news is very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. This good news which will make them, after believing in the Lord, under the right mentor, pastor, teacher, who can train them up. This believer who has been training under the right pastor, teacher, he will come to know the doubts of his mind to be cleared. A Muslim brother, he asks in John 18.36, it says, I am not of this world. Then they say, Jesus, why is the God then? How can we explain to them the angelic conflict? How can we explain to them the controversy between the seed of woman and the seed of serpent? How can we explain to them the virgin birth of my Christ so that we, the believers, could be saved? How can we tell faith alone in Christ alone will lead you to the truth? How can we tell from the fall of Satan, that is fall of Adam, Satan became the ruler and this world doesn't belong to the man but it belongs to Satan. And the world which my Lord is going to come in the millennium, a thousand years of rule, which is not a solution for your permanent happiness or your permanent heaven. Once again, the renovation of the seven and the earth, that world which we need to wait. And this world which was primarily given to Adam and his wife Eve, they failed in their responsibility. And such kind of a Satan ploy when these people wants to understand and they think that, that they are right, the teaching what they are learning is great. They will never know and never realize what is truth in Christ we have kept for us in eternity past. Why and what are the reasons for that dear brethren? The only one humble reason, ignorance. Laziness, negligence, arrogance. Pastor like Benihini will not change because of arrogance nature. Pastors who are there in the pulpits following their crew because they have 40 years of experience and if I could simply join that ministry all over the world, I will be getting money under his name so I can survive. And because of this ignorance of the truth and for the lust patterns of his life, or simply uh, six inches of belly or 12 inches of belly. He wants to exchange the word of the Lord to the sheer rocks of standards of this earth. 
and that's what this man will never change. In fact, when I was happy when Benihin called the word propitiation, I thought he's growing up now at least into the word of the Lord. I thought he's, he's putting some time to understand Bible doctrine. Whether if you want to explain Jesus in the tabernacle, Jesus in the sanctuary that is right now what we are, the thorough training by a pastor teacher will explain to them very clearly what is the bona fide gift and what is the bona fide duty of a pastor teacher in rightly dividing the word of truth. And since this man never realized nor ever wake up to know the truth, that the duty of a bona fide gifted pastor teacher is to inculcate the word of the Lord, the teachings what he has been done, that could have been done in the first five years of the beginning of his ministry. Not after 40 years, right now, what he's doing now. Spiritual recovery can happen at any time. Never before the late. Once you have been out with your physical death or resurrection, whichever could occur, when we appear at the judgment seat of Christ, we should be not ashamed. If you really have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher, and if you have not done your work faithfully to the Lord, the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher could be explained in simple terms like this. A professional plumber is an expert in his field. A professional mechanic is expert in his field. Blacksmith is expert in his field. A software analyst is expert in his field. A pastor teacher should be expert in the word of the Lord. He is a tester of the metals. He tells to you what is right and what is wrong because he is the messenger of Jehovah. And his duty is to inculcate to you the word clearly as the best as it can be derived from the scriptures. From the original languages of the word, teaching and explaining it in isagogical, categorical, rexitical exposition of biblical truth. As it has been explained in the word through the dispensing technique. The duty of the pastor teacher is to make every believer perfect and complete in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The duty of the pastor teacher is to give to you right and accurate information from the original languages of the scriptures. And the duty of the pastor teacher is to prepare the men unto the vessels of honor. But this men, they never want to be vessels of honor, but they want to be vessels of dishonor. And it's purely by their volition where they end up. But ultimately, the duty of the pastor teacher, the minister, wherewith Apostle Paul tells in Colossians 1, 25-29, because of the grace that has been bestowed upon me in this dispensation, I have been a minister to the Gentiles, so that I can inculcate to them the perfection and completion of the truth which could be found in Bible doctrine. And that ministry has been lacking today. That ministry has not been known today. And a pastor teacher has lost entirely the focus of the true ministry of the word of the Lord. And as long as this man they fail to look and to understand Bible doctrine more clearly, even though they survive here for another 400 years or 4,000 years, never will they come to look upon the grace of the Lord and or His Word. But rather, they will just use speculative things. And when through that media, what they have thought, they will back money to be putting there. Sometimes I seldom doubt why this man is the sponsor for such kind of a programs, which in return it is propagating apostasy and not the honor and the glory of Lord. 
when we look upon those believers, they are very much innocent. The true love towards the Lord, if it could be properly given a right direction, right truth, they would have come to know what is there in Christ. And since this is devil's world, false teachers being rampant, apostasy being rampant, the evolution of a believer alone can cause him to know the truth. The uprightness of the believer alone to make a true and right fellowship with Lord God Almighty will give him the truth. We are no one to pull you down or to call you down for the truth. The witness for the truth will be given only for those men whom Lord has prepared and kept. When your heart is upright, when your heart is straight with Lord God Almighty. And if you are not able to understand these things, dear brethren, at least know that our Lord is a Holy One. No lies like Ananias and Sapphira, a good work to be done in a wrong motivation, can be sustained before His glory. He wants a right thing to be done in a right way. And to be doing a right thing for my Lord in a right way, is learning Bible doctrine with a pure and concise heart. Until then you will never know, nor you will come to understand the truth. So with these few words of exhortation, I will end my tape. And the next tape we shall cover the doctrine of propitiation. And then come back and look and try to understand that when we, the pastor teachers of this church age, are not faithful to rightly divide the word of truth or give proper honor to the Lord, how will at any time an unbeliever can look for your work and come back and praise the Lord and be in fellowship with him and grow up in doctrine when you are not able to leave behind a legendary impact of truth in this angelic conflict? So which way you want to go, you decide. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. These last moments are the moments of eternal life for you. When an unbeliever inaudibly tells to Lord God the Father that he believes upon Son, that is the moment itself they shall have this eternal life. This eternal life is for them, for grace, for free. When you express your volition, faith alone in Christ alone, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal one. There is nothing you can add, there is nothing you can work, there is nothing you can deserve, but rather it is grace provision for us. And there is nothing you can pay money for your prosperity, or penance, or tithes. No works. Tetelas tie in the Greek. It has been finished in the past and the result will continue forever and forever. You go and receive it by simple act of faith alone, in Christ alone, because we the believers walk in faith, not in sight. And we the believers of Christianity are not a religion but a relationship with our Lord God Almighty by faith alone, in Christ alone. And that is what we need to look in Christ, dear brethren. So for an unbeliever, the gospel is very simple. Believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the truth is to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The truth, before Lord God, the Holy Spirit can come to us. We were not ready to hear or to take those things. As our Lord told in John 16, 12 through 13. Since you are dull of hearing, you cannot take those things which I want to tell to you all further. I will go and I will send the help for you. He is going to guide you into all the truth. For a believer, it is much emphasized that he will constantly be under the controlling power of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, the Greek verb used as pleroo, which meant to say filling, which led many denominational people to understand denominational errors, telling that filling means speaking in tongues, filling means miracles, filling means healing. No! Filling means at the moment of salvation, Lord God, the Holy Spirit permanently involves in you. When you sin, you lose your fellowship. You get back by using rebound 1 John 1 9. So that this fellowship, when you're getting back into Lord God Almighty control, you are being given the chance, you are being given the time, you are being given the process, you are being given the study to look and to understand more, 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 more into truth. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit will help you to search the scriptures diligently. 
And that is what the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, meant to say. The proper balance between the controlling power ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learning Bible doctrine. Learning Bible doctrine, line upon line, precept upon precept, doctrine upon doctrine, word upon word, truth upon truth, categorization of subject upon subject. And that's how you grow up as you put year by year. In the first year, you don't even crawl. The second year, you crawl. The third year, you try to stand up on your feet. The fourth year, you get engaged into the normal activities of a child. By the tenth year, you are there here to develop some skills. By the age of 14, you need to be a prepared man. Actually, that's the Roman rule. By the age of 18, you are a mature man. You are a major. That's what they call in the government language. By the age of 25 to 30, you are a man fit for marriage again. Though you are a boy or a man, because of your libido, you need to get married. That's what they tell. And by the age of 40, you need to grow up into the spiritual maturity age. That's what they think. That's not the spiritual maturity age. But what I meant to say for you, this is a physical life, but the spiritual life, no doubt you may be 50 years older, believing in Christ, but still then you're a spiritual baby. You need to grow up by taking up on the spiritual fundamentalists, the spiritual doctrine, the faith perception of application of the word. And the, the primary ta target for you is to use rebound. And if you're not using rebound, never you will realize what for you are kept alive in this earth. So, as the stages grow up, first you take sincere milk, and then the bread, Matthew 4.4, 4, and then the strong meat, because it belongs to only a mature man, as told in Hebrews 5.14. And this is the status quo for a man to grow up, so that when Apostle Paul could come, he told to the Corinthians, I'm not able to talk to you with mature doctrine, with solid food, but rather, once again, I'm giving you the sincere milk because you have not been in a status quo of growing up. That should be not our fate today in today's Christendom. We have the completed revolution, completed canon of scripture in our hands. And we can grow up to maturity only by one key, 1 John 1 9, which is nothing but rebound and to be controlled of the spirit as told in Ephesians 5.18b. So that when we are be controlled of the spirit, we walk in the spirit, we live in the spirit and we yield the fruit of the spirit by searching diligently the scriptures and not by any other means. And the duty of the pastor teacher is to carry so thon log and preach the word in season and out of season. So that when we appear to the judgment seat of Christ, we need not be worried. But rather we could be in return to tell the truth. Lord, for the Dharma to Roma witnesses which you have given, the one who indwells in us. That is Lord Godhead. And the Bible which you have given in our hands, that is the entire Bible doctrine from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. And above all, the witnesses who are our hearers, who could hear our truth. If there are no hearers to hear our truth, we need not worry, but nature will be our witness. And because of this Dharma to Roma witnesses, the charge that have given unto us, Faithfully, we are preaching your word, Caruso Thon Lagan. That should be the goal of a pastor teacher. Not begging money by giving false assurance that if you could sow the seed, you will get 40 times better, you will get 50 times better, you will get 77 times better. And giving a wrong assurance for unbelievers for salvation and for believers into spiritual maturity for blessings. Spiritual maturity blessings come from escrow contract in time. That is number one, desire for truth. Number two, love for God. Number three, your stability in character. Number four, incredible strength to maintain that stability of character. Number five, perseverance. No matter what it comes, you stick up onto the word of the Lord. Your motivation, right motivation to grow up to the knowledge of Bible doctrine and give maximum glorification unto Christ. Your momentum to stick up on to learn the word of the Lord more clearly and sharing the happiness of Christ and being occupied with Christ is the ultima for you, dear brethren. That is the blessing which you should really count in time. And this blessing will in return apply for you in eternity because of the astral blessings for eternity not the money that you put into such kind of a begging ministry which represent falsely to you 
the entire grace of Lord and his essence. It is better for us to be truth, to hold the truth in the pure conscience of our soul, rather than representing the world wrongly just to pass down with some pieces of bread and for some handful of barley. The same 40 years ministry with Chuck Missler or my Robert Bunker Thime or the great men who were exegeting the word of the Lord when they could compare the truth with the comparison with this man who has been doing because in fact there is no comparison to be done because he is a faith healer and that healing ministry has been seized long back by Lord God the Holy Spirit and he is a blasphemous liar Mr. Benihin. How can we compare that 40 years afterwards he wants to teach something about Jesus in the tabernacle which doesn't even have the right information of the truth. When we compare to the teachings of my mentor, Guru Robert Bunker Thime, they cannot even value for the dust of the feet of my Robert Bunker Thime sir's teaching. And that's are the standards which the love world which the world loves today in Christendom, not the standards of teaching which my human mentor left behind. Because this human mentor standards requires proper discipline, self-sacrifice in your life to know if you are a pastor teacher to grow up upon his words, upon the words of Lord God Almighty, and it is the duty of Lord God the Holy Spirit to give you that information when you are having right into fellowship with the truth. And you have right into fellowship to learn this doctrine. When you are honestly desiring to know the truth more accurately than anything else. And if you are not interested at all to look the truth, not to understand the truth, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So which way you want to go as a pastor, Kerusothon Lagan, and the gift of a pastor teacher to feed the flock with knowledge and with understanding. Or you will not do that, it is left to you. The lips of a messenger of Lord God of hosts should keep knowledge. He should not diminish a word. He should be pure from the blood of those people who are hearing him. Because he is not shunned to declare the entire counsel of the Lord. And if you are not able to do that, Lord help you at the judgment seat of Christ. So which way you want to go, you decide. So, Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.